Welcome Mechanics and Materials students. This is our third recorded lecture in our topic of yield criteria. So at this point we have derived expressions for yielding uh, for any complex loading based on max shear which has given us the Tresca criteria that we can express as this, this irregular hexagon uh, if we assume plane stress in the xy and we assume that our x and y directions are principal directions. And then we have a little bit more complicated derivation in which we used uh, strain energy, deviatoric only, so the, the shape changing strain energy. And then we used, an ex we used a criteria of that strain energy that would contribute to yielding for a given material and then we apply that to a plane stress condition and we were able to construct what's an, what is basically an irregular ellipsoid of which marks the combination of applied stress in the x and the y that would yield to, lead to yielding under the the deviatoric stress criteria which is von Mises so in this lecture, we're just going to compare those two. So we've got Tresca, which says, hey, if you're max shear, uh, regardless of your loading, if your max shear in any direction is more than a certain amount, then you're going to yield. And with von Mises, you've got, if your deviatoric strain energy is more than a certain amount, um, you're going to yield. So how do those two compare if we look at our simple case of plane stress, and our x and y are our principal directions. Well, one of the easiest ways to compare the two is to just plot them together, assuming the same applied stress in the x and y direction. So they'd be on the, on the same axis. And the first thing we see is that the Tresca um, criteria is literally inscribed inside the von Mises ellipsoid. And they touch at uh, for cases where x or y, whether they're tensile or compressive, are um, they're the only stress applied. So our uniaxial stress, either tensile or compressive, uh, for those cases our von Mises and Tresca are equivalent. So um, no difference between the two. Uh, likewise for cases where we have the same exact um, stress of either or in the case of Tresca here, um, where basically you have equal values of um, basically of, of stress in the X or the Y because in that case it wouldn't matter which one it was if they were the same value. That still corresponds to a uniaxial kind of stress condition. Just you know, it's acknowledging that you could have it in either direction it would lead to the same uh, position on your criteria envelope. Uh, where we differ is in the case in the case of Tresca, where we've got a combination of tensile and compressive uh, applied stresses, and also these cases where uh, you might have a combination of stresses in uh, the x and the y that are in the same direction now. Um, in the case of the von Mises, it's going to say, ah, it's going to take a little bit higher uh, stress in any one of those directions to lead to yield. Tresca says, nah, you're, you're going to yield a little bit earlier. So in that sense, the von Mises yield criteria is less conservative. So you can, it predicts you won't yield quite as early. And the point, points where they are the furthest apart are these points A and F and C and D which correspond to one half Y on the Tresca. So if you if you are looking at those applied stresses and someone says um, which would you feel safer with a Tresca criteria of on Mises you should probably say Tresca because it will it is more conservative in that it will predict yielding at a lower applied stress so it would lead to a more conservative design. So we can we can kind of step through and say well how much lower? So we're going to take these points of maximum departure here and here or there and there 
So that's where the two criteria are the most different. Let's say, where is that? Well, let's, let's take A. A occurs when sigma xx is one half of our max shear criteria capital Y. And so one half Y, uh, whatever the one half Y value, here, well, here's Y over here, so here's one half Y. So in that case, our, our value for A on the Y axis would be whatever we would get from the von Mises expression. So we'll just call it sigma YY divided by two, whatever corresponds. So we basically we rewrite our von Mises expression with this substitution corresponding to this acknowledgement of that point. And so we can write here's our here's our J two and our Y squared from von Mises and we can basically solve for a sigma Y Y in terms of capital Y squared, and we end up with this, the sigma YY value corresponding to point A on that, on the von Mises ellipsoid as being the square root of four thirds times our big capital Y, which is that value of, uni, of, of a uniaxial single direction stress that would have led to yield, which is easier to see in Tresca. So four thirds, square root of four thirds is about 1.155. So it's not that different, but it, but it is different by, by a few percent. So that's the maximum difference you're going to get between the two. Um, there is less difference. The, there's another kind of fairly sizable difference, relatively speaking. At points B and E, it's less than at points A, Y, C, and D. But you can work through um, substitute expressions. Again, this is only plain stress, showing the differences between the two and, and work those out. As it turns out, max shear directions, typically 45 degrees here for uh, a uniaxial tension test, uh, is going to have uh, differences between uh, Tresk and von Mises of, of a bit more of our 0.5744y. So that's the, the main takeaway. We're not going to get into too much the exact numerical differences. These are, these are examples that are very limited to plain stress. Um, uh, for this case, which, which may not represent what we have, and, and furthermore, plain stress where the applied stresses are principal directions. But it shows von Mises basically encapsulates or corresponds to overlays Tresca for cases where we have uniaxial tensile or compression stress, but otherwise it, it leads to a, a less conservative yield prediction. So it is outside of the Tresca envelope. And so it's a little bit less conservative, but generally not too much just by this, this fairly small few percentage amount. So we're going to end. This is a, a quick lecture just comparing the, the two uh, yield criteria. And in the next lecture, we'll pick up a couple of examples where we'll work some real problems with the real numbers and we'll predict yield using both criteria and using our expressions for J2 uh, for the von Mises and just finding our max shear from more circles in the case of Tresca.